Everybody, welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Major League Baseball Pick Show. I'm your host, Meg Ruler 31. <clears throat> and wow, what a great slate last night, even with DeGrom getting hurt. Wisnowski as the SP2, uh, Pittsburgh stack with uh, Bryant one off. Um, just Pittsburgh like went all for a win free show on, um, on Colorado. It wasn't like a power show at all. You look at the um, I think they only had one home run. It was McCutcheon. It, it was just like, you get hit and you get a run and you steal a base and you get hit and you get a run and you steal a base. Like everybody gets hit. Everybody gets a run. Everybody steals base. Um, not like that, but you know, it, it was like a lot of small ball. Like just, it was just like hit after hit after hit. Um, not like a power show. And it all added up to a really, really nice night. The Cubs went off too. That was the um, GPP stack we had there. So Another nice slate tonight. It's almost identical with like the teams playing, but we sprinkle in some other ones. We get like the Yankees Angels, we get Boston, Minnesota, we get um, Washington and, and Baltimore uh, added on to the slate. Uh, no major weather concerns, so just have to keep an eye on Arizona and St. Louis. But we've got pitching, we've got hitting, we've got so many different ways to go. So let's jump into this. Uh, Baltimore and Washington, 12 miles per hour wind across the field, 66 degrees. So uh, kind of neutral hitting environment. Dean Kramer, Josiah Gray, not really interested in any of them. Maybe if you're playing a lot of entries, Kramer, because Washington's just not a great offense. Um, Josiah Gray on the other side is, is not um, interesting to me at all. Uh, Baltimore, I think, you know, they might be popular just because they play early and they've just been hitting. And when they get on, they run just like Arizona. So definitely um, they're in play here. Uh, probably my fifth favorite uh, stack of the night. Washington, like you can use some cheap pieces here to try to make some of the higher stacks work. Because again, Kramer's not the best pitcher. And we have seen him give up like hits to Oakland and some other lesser teams. So I wouldn't necessarily say that we're across Washington off. I think that there's some cheap fill-in pieces there. Next up, we have the Angels and the Yankees. We have Jose Suarez and Clark Schmidt. Um, <clears throat> Jose Suarez, uh, he can get some K's, the Yankees 10 case, so I think he's maybe in play, but I think he feels more of my no interest. Um, uh, I, I don't think you really need him on the slate. There's other value options I like better, but if you're playing 150 max, keep him in like maybe 5%. And Clark Schmidt on the other side, not really interested. Like this guy had like a lot of praise and spring training, and like, oh no, he's just like trying to work things out. And then his first couple starts, and was like, yeah, you know, he's still trying to work things out, but I, I think when like Montas and um, Rendon and some of the other guys come off the IL, I don't think you're going to see him. He's probably going to be down in uh, Scranton by me um, pitching for the Rail Riders. Uh, wind blowing out here, 14 miles per hour, but only 55 degrees. So decent hitting environment. Angels, I'm not super interested in. Like if once you get by Schmidt, the Yankees have a decent bullpen. I mean, they're just so expensive and just. On this slate, I just don't think they're they're a priority. So if you're playing 150 max, then definitely, you know, have an angel stack there. Um, but if they get to Schmidt early, but otherwise, like you have a lot of righty on righty here and and the bottom of the lineup just it isn't um and I, I hope he was one of my favorite catchers also, but he's up to like four three now. So I just um unless he's against a lefty, I'm not super interested there. Yankees. Now you're probably gonna laugh at this one, but there's the top cheap stack, I believe, tonight here. Um, because they have a lot of but look at it, like Judge is at six four, but everybody else is like in the mid four K range or or cheaper, like Volpe three three, potentially probably leading off here against a lefty here. Um you know, Torres is four seven, he's the second most expensive one. De La Mayhew might hit like in the middle of the order here. He's 4-4. Oswell Cabrera is decent at 2-5. And, like, Trevino, the catcher, like, or whoever catches, like, uh, Hicks at 2-1. Like, I don't, really don't play too much Aaron Hicks, but there's a lot of cheap pieces here uh, and the Yankees to maybe fill in in your lineup, especially Volpe at 3-3 leading off. I, You know, he has one home run. He does have the speed. It's just a while before he starts putting together. They get Rushman last year when he came up. Um, Didn't, like, hit well at first, but then it just started to click, and you know, let's, I think he's definitely one to get ahead of sometimes the shortstop's not a, a deep um, place on most slates for a position. So uh, Minnesota and Boston here, Sonny Gray and Chris Sale. 
really like Sonny Gray here. He started out the season. Boston's just not the same Boston. Now the wind is blowing out. I love how it's Travis. So that does help hitting here, but it's still 55 degrees. So it's not like it's wind blowing out. It's like 70 degrees. So I think I'll be playing some Sonny Gray. I think he's my favorite pitcher in the medium range here. Chris Sale on the other side. I think he works as a cheap pitcher, but the more I look at this, I think, you know, oh, I think I need to switch these two because I think Evaldi is definitely a better play than Sale. I'm just kind of concerned with with Sale. Like he's, I think his ERA is like 11 and he's given up contact. So uh, maybe he settles in against this twin team, but this twin team is an awesome um, leverage team and it's, it's really, really cheap also uh, to fill in. And, and Boston, I think, again, if people are playing great, it's just a leverage um, stack there too. Uh, Texas and Kansas City, Ivaldi and Brad Keller. I like both these pitchers, actually. They both recently faced um, in this matchup this, the same team in Texas. Ivaldi did well. Keller did well. Um, you know, 77 degrees here, and the wind blowing out 16 miles per hour. So it is a decent hitting environment, but I think Ivaldi and Keller both can do what they – like, without um, Seager in this lineup here, like, you have still Simony in – and like Nate Lowe's decent, but you know, Josh Smith is just really they had him bad in second, but he, he really has done absolutely nothing. And Grossman was great when he was on the A's, but he's like high at catcher, like junk. I mean, there's some pieces here, but nothing that's like super, super scary. Kansas City, same thing. There's pieces here, like which you know, if you can get on Melendez, um, Pascatino and Perez, but after that, like the the fall off is 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 crazy like reyes has power but he's like usually like a specialist against like lefties and if all these righty so really like both pitchers here not a big fan of um the bats by any means uh arizona and st louis uh just watch the weather here looks like maybe a 20 percent chance of rain doesn't look too bad 70 degrees so wind's not going to be a factor here jameson montgomery jameson is um filling in until some of these guys get uh healthy but i don't see him going like more than like three or four innings here in st louis is a decent offense and montgomery is solid you know i definitely like him in, and he's probably not going to have a lot of ownership here uh you do have some righties with some power here with Marte and walker and guriel to a degree he just hasn't shown it much as much and longoria had power when he was with san francisco i haven't seen that as much from him um but you know definitely our it's not a scary lineup here, but I think, you know, it's a cheap lineup too that, um, you know, the highest price guy is Rojas at 4-8, but I wouldn't play him lefty-lefty, but Marte 4-4, like Walker 4-3, everybody else is like the, or no, actually 3-4 is like in the 3K range. So Arizona, again, another great source of speed with a little bit of power to to fill in your lineups. St. Louis, I think is just a stack here, um, especially like the lefties, uh, I pretty much I, I find taking the righties goal starts in Arenado and then just take, you know, whoever hits up in the they just have like 30 left-handed outfielders, as it seems like, between um I think Gorman and like Newt Barr and uh Burlinson and Carlson and and I mean you got Donovan there too. He's not an outfielder, he's an infielder. So lots of um options there but again i think it's more of a left-handed stack against jamison with the two big right-handed power hitters more than anything blue jays and astros completely wrong in the astros last night i apologize for that and, and if you played gossman like i do not know what happened like houston actually turned back the clock a couple of years and with the lineup they rolled out like you like were licking your lips and like wow gossman's a great play here and then houston just went off on him in the first couple of innings so and it's baseball it's a high variant sport things happen so we're on to next day, but tonight we have Bassett and Equity, and I don't like either one of these pitchers. Bassett has not looked um, good to start the season, so I think Houston definitely makes the favorite GPP stack again. And love the right-handed power bats against Equity because Equity is a decent pitcher, but he's a very reverse splits guy. So you really want to um, take advantage of the right-handed bats. So if you're playing GPP again, like stack maybe game stack if you can get some cheap pitchers and, and make it work because some of the Houston parts aren't super expensive, but, you know, I think, you know, Alvarez and Tucker are definitely the priority here with the lefties. 
And then, you know, some of the right-handed power bats for for Toronto, if you can get them in the same lineup, great. If not, then, you know, I just stack them independently. And like, if you're doing like a 20 max, I'd have a stack Houston and a stack of Toronto for tonight. Now we come to Coors Field. Wind blowing out 25 miles per hour. This has got to be the chalkiest of chalkiest um, place. Obviously, prefer Pittsburgh here. Um, Anybody in the lineup, you can stack them so many different ways. They get Urena, who's probably the worst pitcher in Major League Baseball, playing in Colorado. It could not be a better situation. Um, Bay is probably going to lead off here. Lefty Reynolds is a superstar. I don't know if McCutcheon makes the lineup with um, righty and righty, but he might. Santana's a switch hitter. I mean, he still hit some last night. Smith Najiba is a can hit for power. He's got speed. Probably be in the fifth hold. Swiski had a home run last night. He's a lefty. Castro is a solid switch hitter. He's hitting over three hundred. Um, even delay the catcher, whoever they throw out there. Everybody is in play for Pittsburgh. So. Um, Mix, match, f- figure out like who your fill-ins are. It, you could probably build a 20 max lineup just by different combinations of Pittsburgh. Colorado on the other side, Velasquez is not a great pitcher either um, with the wind and everything. So, you know, definitely Profar leading off is usually cheap. Bryant, Cron, McMahon. Um, if uh, Mike Moustakas or Moose Tacos uh, makes the lineup, then definitely usually probably a cheap left-handed power bat that is a bit you can throw in there as one off or, you know, but I would lean more on the Pittsburgh side of it um, than the Colorado side, but I think definitely with the win there, both sides are in play here for a high scoring game tonight. Milwaukee Brewers and Seattle Mariners, uh, Ray and Gilbert Ray is another guy that's just, you know, kind of filling in, um, Looks like Burns got hurt last night, too, so maybe it'll be in the rotation a little bit longer. But uh, not bad stuff, but Seattle um, is not a team that I really want to play with um, against. Like They've been cooled down a little bit since they've left um, Oakland, but you know they definitely have a lot of power and potential here. And Gilbert on the other side, I think, is going to be an underrated, um, low-owned um, pitcher tonight. So against Milwaukee, I definitely like him in, in the mid-range. Because like all these other ones like Javier Snell and Bass I have in yellow, it's just like such a risky range in their in their matchups. So bat wise, Milwaukee again. I think there's some cheap pieces you can throw in there. I prefer New York or Arizona or Minnesota over them, or even Washington. But I think you know that if you can find the right one offs to make your line work, that's fine. Seattle I think would just be a stack here, um, lower down probably like ninth in line. Atlanta and San Diego. Uh, Strider and Snell. Uh, Strider's probably going to be the top pitcher on the slate tonight. Um, and you can do, you can get Strider in there. Uh, Stroman's probably going to be the chalk SP2 and then um, a Pittsburgh stack. And you can, you can make it all work. There's enough salary there because Pittsburgh isn't super priced up in, in Coors Field. Uh, and Stroman's uh, priced down. FanDuel is like more expensive than Strider. So it's a little bit more of a decision there. Um, but, but still, Strider, I think like this matchup, even though it's the Padres would find. So Padres would be favorite Leversack. Blake Snell is an absolute fate. He's broken. Something's wrong with him. He is just walking batters, giving up runs and stuff. So and nobody's really talking about it, but I put Atlanta as my second favorite stack tonight. And I think that they can um, definitely put up some runs, like especially the righties here. So, I mean, if you can get Olsen in the stack, that's fine, but I build it usually without him. So Cunha, Riley, Murphy, Elby's um, definitely good. Uh, Cubs and Athletics. Uh, Cubs went off last night. Wind's blowing out 13 miles per hour. They get Waldachuk, another lefty that's kind of suspect. So um, Stroman on the other side, I think, is is such a solid play here. So he could be your SP1. SP2 is Strider, however that works for you. Cubs, again, um, fourth favorite stack. You're going to go Pittsburgh, Atlanta, Colorado. And then um, definitely going to have a, a Cubs stack here with the righties. Homer, Swanson, Hap, Suzuki, Minch, Sini wisdom like just so many options from the right hand side here ace um they'd just be cheap fill-ins but i think or leverage shack but i think that they're you know stroman's probably going to dominate them uh mets and dodgers mcgill and kershaw mcgill not interested against this dodger team and kershaw on the other side i know it's a right-handed 
heavy Mets lineup with a lot of power, but I think he's still elite enough to be able to neutralize that. So I think the Mets make a great leverage stack. Um, and the Dodgers, I think, are in play against McGill, but I like a bunch of teams more than them tonight. They're still on the slate. Might be a great late night hammer um, in, a, in a 20 max, but not a priority at all. So let's look at the lineups, get you on your way for your day here. So like I said, I'm taking Strider. I think the most world will take Stroman as their SP2. Evaldi also works. Maybe Keller, Gray, Gilbert. There's other people that you can work in there, get you a little bit more money. Maybe you'd be a little bit different in a, a three max tournament or something like that. At um, catcher, you can punt or play whoever's um, playing for uh, Chicago or uh, Pittsburgh here. But I'm going with um, Chicago and a Pittsburgh stack. So Mancini at first base. You can go Santana there if you want to for Pittsburgh. Bay and Hayes from Pittsburgh. Shortstop. Um, again, if you can, um, uh, I really like uh, Castro for uh pittsburgh fits in well there volpe if you want to um if he fits your salary if you want to take one off there Hap and reynolds and then like if mccutcheon's in the lineup he's he's good but i, I really like uh smith najaba Nij there or um swiskey there's there's so many just kind of see who the pittsburgh lineup is and, and correlate there um and I said, I'm, I'm filling with Cubs there, but you can fill in with whatever team that you want to, to make it work. Same thing for um, FanDuel. I'm taking Strider Stroman up top. Um, it's definitely going to be a Pittsburgh, but I'm filling with Washington. They're the cheapest stack that I could figure out to make with it. But then again, if you stack like the bottom side of the Pittsburgh lineup, like Reynolds is definitely a priority, but then however you do the rest of the wraparound, you might be able to get another team in there with that. And like I said, there's lots of great options for the day. In GPP, I am taking Evaldi and um, probably pairing with like Gray or Gilbert here to keep the price down. And then I'm taking Atlanta. I want Murphy. Pick Olsen if you want to. If not, like I think I'm probably going to go um, cheap at first base um, and, and second base. Um, Albies always fits there too, but there's also like Solano who's like really cheap for Minnesota because the stacks Atlanta and Minnesota. I'm, I'm going to target sale and I'm definitely going to target Snell. So those two guys, I think are going to give a bunch of runs. So Riley Grissom has had a hit every single um, game he's played since he's been called up. Acuna, Buxton, Garlic's really cheap. If he's there, probably hitting the fifth has the splits advantage against um, sale also. For uh, FanDuel, I'm I can make it up to Kershaw. Uh, it all depends on how the lineup comes out. But again, Miranda, first base. If you want to you take like Evaldi or Keller, you can probably get Olsen in your stack there. Uh, Miranda, Riley, Grissom, Acuna, Garlic, Buxton, if you can get to him. If Buxton's out, then that just opens up more salary. You can probably get up to Strider or Stroman with that lineup. But again, it's Atlanta and Minnesota. But then again, don't don't like... Colorado's definitely in play. Chicago, I you know have um, some stacks. Love Baltimore, also um, Houston, Toronto, uh, Yankees cheap. Um, like so many different ways to go tonight. So lots of options. Great slate. Hopefully you're able to make some money based on this content. So if we helped you, please help us. Like the video, subscribe to our channel so you know when all our videos are coming out. Share with your friends so that they can. Um, join our community. We just keep growing and growing and growing, which is so awesome. So if you want more information on FSI DFS, check out the description video. All of it's there. And if you have any questions, put them in the chat below or hit me up at Twitter at Medula31. Um, good luck in your contest today. Hopefully everything smashes like last night and I'll see you next time.